This is the Doper A113 subharmonic generator. It takes a square wave and converts it into kind of a sawtooth and allows you to mix together different subdivisions of that original tone. Just divide by two. I'll bring in a fifth lower and a couple octaves lower than that. In addition to allowing you to mix together four different divisions, it has presets and also the ability to change divisions by using so-called foot controllers, which are actually control voltages. For example, I can change to a different set of divisions by feeding 5 volts to the foot controller input. This is sort of a tribute module. Dieter Dofer wanted to recreate as many pieces as he could of Oscar Sala's classic electronic music instrument the mixture trontonium. This is one of the main tone generating devices, and we'll be looking at it over the next three movies. In this movie, I'm going to focus on just one section of it, and how it does convert that square wave into sawtooth waves, and the different divisions you have available to you. In the second movie, I'll explore creating different mixtures of divisions, including using these foot controllers. And then in the third movie, I'll explore this as a sub-audio source for modulation voltages, and even to trigger percussion patterns. My current patch is that I have a square wave coming out of my Moog Mother 32, going to one channel of the data, just so you can see this reference, just that blue waveform, and then that goes into the square wave input on the subharmonic generator. The shape of that square wave is very important, I'll get to that in a second. These four level controls for the four individual subharmonics generated appear on the mix output. You can also get them pre-level control at individual single outputs. In general, the output level of this module is pretty low, so I'm using the two times level booster of one channel of my erogenous tones levitate to bring it up to level. Otherwise, it'd be down around here, but you see it's a lot lower than the square wave coming in. Dofer's thinking on that is, if you had them all set to the same division, he didn't want to clip the final signal. That's why he kept it in a nice safe range. But I boost it, particularly when I'm using different divisions. In this movie, I'm going to focus on just one of these outputs. The top one for now. And I'll go ahead and open up my filter cutoff so we can clearly see the harmonics of this waveform. I'm going to put the VCA on for now. And let's look at the harmonic spectra. It does have that sort of linear fall off in the strength of the harmonics that we'd be used to from a sawtooth wave. There's our fundamental, right around middle C. I seem to be tuned a little bit flat right now. Second harmonic at roughly twice the frequency, and so forth. However, this circuit does have some artifacts. You notice this little sub-octave down here. That corresponds to some of the instability you see in the waveform. And also, the shape of the square wave coming in has a big effect on the sawtooth coming out. You can see by looking at the data's display that the sawtooth has drawn one slope to the falling edge of the square wave and drawn at a different slope back to the rising edge of the square wave. If I was to change the width of that square wave, The shape of our sawtooth changes, our timbre changes a little bit, and also we get some different little rumbles and other harmonics mixed in. Signal level coming in can also affect how the subharmonic generator works. For example, if I was to take that square wave out of my Moog, run it through its own attenuator, When there's no square wave coming in, of course, there's no sound coming out. But as I carefully increase the signal level, you'll see the square waves start to appear on the data display, and then the subharmonic generator will start generating tone. And if you're careful, you can find a point of instability if you want a more glitched out performance from your module. Otherwise, playing around with signal strength can actually help make the production of that wave more stable. The fact that the square wave affects the timbre coming out of this module opens up some interesting possibilities. For one, you can now modulate your pulse width and therefore modulate the sound of the sawtooth coming out of this module. I'll sustain a note again. Turn up my VCO mod on the Mother 32, which is right now routed to the pulse width. Make a 
slow it down a little bit. So that's a way of getting a chorus sound with a sawtooth harmonics rather than having to use the typical square wave to get that sound. And again, you can hear the low signal level of the dope for module. You might want to boost it by even more than two times to bring it up to the same level you expect from your other oscillators. This module does track fairly high because you do need a very high input frequency to create these different divisions, but it does glitch out if you feed it too high of a frequency. I'll go ahead and turn this on again. Start playing with divisions. Take the modulation out for now. There's divide by two, three, four, which is two octaves down. Now we start getting into some unusual intervals. All the way down to divide by 24. You're just hearing the edge of that sawtooth at this point. It's below audibility. To turn that back into an audible tone, you'll need to transpose your main oscillator very high in frequency. For example, I'll put this up four octaves. And I've got a tone out of this, but when I mix back in the original waveform, you hear it's almost supersonic at this point. So to get the biggest advantage out of using the subharmonic generator and to have more choices in what divisions you use, you want to have an oscillator that tracks at very high frequencies. But again, as I mentioned, be careful going too high. It tracks that high. You notice when I went up an octave, it went down in pitch. So it does glitch out at roughly six octaves above middle C for the master oscillator. Even at the maximum division of 24, it's not too bad of a pitch. And at lower divisions, that's still pretty high pitch. But do keep that in mind. You cannot put anything into this and get a predictable sawtooth back out of it. So that's the basics of this module. I also mentioned the foot switch controllers. I'm misspeaking there because they're not really switches. They want a zero to five volt signal. Once they have a higher voltage, they'll switch to an alternate set of divisions that you can program. And this whole idea of setting up mixtures of different divisions, saving them as presets, saving variations underneath the foot controller are all subjects I'll tackle in the next movie.